Hello, freak bitches. We're kidding, Eliza. We're kidding. Don't call her Eliza either. She'll get mad at that, too. My Eliza. name is Eliza. Eliza. You know, she doesn't use the last name anymore. Well, neither does, uh, well, Christina is Christina P now. Really? Sebastian Maniscalco is just Sebastian now. A lot of white people getting crazy lately. Tig Natara is just Tig. Is that cultural appropriation to use uh, a white person to use only one name? <laughs> <laughs> I, I always forget what's cultural appropriation. Right, we need right. to constantly be reminded. I tweeted something today. I was reading a fucking article and I almost punched my screen. They're saying that hoop earrings are cultural oh, appropriation. No, girls aren't allowed to wear hoop earrings. Really? Cultural appropriation. Damn. Do you know how fucking privileged you have to be? Like how soft? Look at that. Hoop earrings criticizes cultural appropriation. Do you know how soft you have to be? To give into that, to give yeah. into that, and how how fucking dumb you have to be to say that. Yeah, you have to be so dumb. And it's you're almost racist. This, I think it's the uh, it's the it opposite. Racist. It's racist against white people. But no, it's, it's racist against black people. What? They're jungle jungle people that only wear giant fucking hoops in their ears. What I read was Latinas. Latinas are criticizing it and saying it's a part of their culture. Oh, it's their culture. Yeah, it's like people oh, are just picking it was a black terms. Thing. No, black people don't want girls to wear braids. Oh, cornrows can't really? wear cornrows. Yeah, you can wear like regular white people braids. The little skinny braids, that's cultural appropriation. What about Goldilocks? She was white. What about golf shirts? Are they allowed to wear golf right. shirts? Right. They shouldn't be. If we they're going to get crazy it. with these braids, it's not Green we. pants. Here's the problem. Yellow this belts. Whole, all this wee bullshit. The entire country is a melting pot of cultural appropriation. You dumb cunts. All right. That is the whole idea of having a civilization, yeah. is that you get to share each other's food, share each other's recipes, listen to each other's music, listen to each other's jokes and stories, get, buy each other's clothes. You know, there was this, um, this journalist that went to um, Japan, and they were talking about cultural appropriation, whether or not they thought that like white girls like Katy Perry wearing the geisha outfit was cultural appropriation. Mm. And they were, they were like universally saying, no, we're happy that people love right. Japanese culture yeah. and that they do that. They're yeah. happy. Yeah. But over here, you get these fucking dummies that are just looking to complain and criticize and just call out everything and everybody about everything. Yeah. It's, uh... Oh, my God. I, I see this. What is this? No. This Jeremy Lin? Yeah, so he uh, came out with a, uh, in the preseason, I think, he had dreadlocks in his hair, and a former NBA player called him out on it, Kenyon Martin. But Jeremy Lin's response to it was actually really good, if you want to check that out. Hey, man, it's all good. You don't have to like my hair, and definitely entitled to your opinion. Actually, I, leg I legit grateful you sharing it, TBH, to be honest. At the end of the day, I appreciate that I have dreads and you have Chinese tattoos. There you go. Because I think it's a side of respect. And I think as minorities, the more we appreciate each other's cultures, the more we influence mainstream society. Thanks for everything you did for the Nets and hoops. I had your poster up on my wall growing up. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is what he said right here. That's really classy. Um, somebody really need to tell him, like, all right, bro, we get it. You want to be black. Like, we get it. But the last name is Lin. All right. Well, he's a Wait, fucking- Wait, who said that? The other guy. Who is the other guy? Kenyon Martin. Kenyon Martin. Usually there was a picture of his okay. Chinese But tattoos. it's been removed? Yeah. yeah. Right well, now. he's a dummy. And that Jeremy Lin guy is a very classy character for the way he answered it. First of all, dreads are not black. They, they were a sign of people not washing their hair that dates back to the Greeks and the Romans. There's ancient sculptures of Caucasian-looking people with dreadlocks. Dreadlocks were worn by the Vikings. It is not a black thing. Hmm. Because some black people wear them does not mean it's a black I mean, the idea that this is a real thing, this cultural appropriation, that people go around pointing at people, saying you can't wear your hair a certain way. Yeah. Like we're limiting hairstyles. Mm. And it's just so many people are just looking forward to criticizing and getting shitty with people over almost nothing. Yeah. It's just no. It, the whole the, the whole um, energy of this country is supposed to be complete assimilation. Like you yeah. said, let's pick the best shit from each culture and make it just American hodgepodge. And that's what it's about with gentrification. You know, you want people to not all live in one neighborhood and all dress exactly the same as each other. You want there to be a merging of different looks, yeah. different addresses, sure. working in different trades. You know, there used to be, if you were Irish, you were a cop. That's it. 
That's what we fucking did. You know, we were cops or we were soldiers. When we first came over here in like the 1860s during the famine, they just, we got off the boat hungry and they threw a fucking uniform on us and sent us in to fight front lines against the South. Or you were a cop. And then after that, they got into the trades. There's a lot of Irish people in unions. Right. You know, a lot of Irish in the Longshoremen's Union, a lot of Irish in the, you know, the Carpenter's Union. Yeah. But look, fusion restaurants. What's a fusion restaurant? Yeah. You take a couple different cultures, you combine their food into some sort of a unique thing. And it's, it was a big thing for a while. People loved fusion. Yeah. They loved that kind of food. And now there's a ton of people complaining when white people cook Mexican food. Yeah. Like, there's this famous guy, I forget his name, can't be that famous. I guess he's not that famous, if I forget his name. But he's a, a famous white guy who loves Mexican food. And he um, opened up a Mexican restaurant, and all these people got pissed that this guy is uh, cooking Mexican food. Mm. But this guy's been writing books about Mexican cuisine. Mm -hmm. He goes down to Mexico. He learns how to cook authentic Mexican dishes from people that live in these villages and towns in mm. Mexico and, and like has a deep love and appreciation for the culture of Mexico. Yeah. I mean, this guy's essentially a Mexican cuisine scholar. And all these people give this fucking poor guy, that's his name. All, what is his name? Rick Bayless. Rick Bayless. Mm. And he's famous. I mean, I've, I've read one of his books on Mexican food. And I've seen articles written on him and video interviews and stuff. And this guy is uh, getting in, uh, in trouble with other people. When chefs become famous cooking other cultures' food. Mm. You don't own your culture, you fucking idiot. You know why? Because you didn't create it. You didn't invent pizza. You didn't invent pasta. You didn't invent Chinese food. It's been around for hundreds of fucking years. You were just born. You were born with a certain ethnicity. You don't own that ethnicity. The idea that you can keep other people from enjoying it and appreciating the history of other human beings is fucking racist. And mm. it's stupid. This, this thing that we're getting into where we're criticizing people, you know, b based on various aspects of you know, uh, culture that they enjoy. It's insanity. Yeah. It's insanity. I know. Think about how Italians have affected, like, fashion in this country. Sure. I mean, from high fashion all the way down to, like, the disco era. When How all about of a sudden, rap music? Right. They were all calling themselves Gotti, and right. they were all calling Al Capone, and yep. I mean, come on, man. I mean, how many fucking rap songs, like, have Godfather lyrics in them, yeah. and it's just, cut the shit. It's right. so stupid. Yeah. It's so stupid. And that's my culture, and I'll tell you, you can have it. That's why I love one of the seminal moments in American culture was Aerosmith getting together with DMC and doing Walk This Way. That was a, yeah. That's what America is supposed to be. Yeah, it's just, it's kids today looking to point the finger at uh, the world they see and looking to find fault in it mm. and find fault in each other. And it's this call out culture that we see. Mm. There's plenty of shit that's wrong in the world. There's plenty of shit. Mm. And I guess this is just a byproduct of people having the freedom to communicate. I mean, I guess that's what we're seeing. But there's, there's plenty of shit to really pay attention to. Jeremy Lin wearing dreadlocks isn't on that list. Mm. You know, yeah. girls that wear hoop earrings, they're not on that list. Mm. It's just fucking... The white kids that wear baggy pants... So what? Yeah, so what? Who gives a shit? Yeah, to but, me, that's a sign that they're, like, accepting black culture. Yeah, That the they want to inter intermix. They want to hang out together and share each other's fashions and ideas and drugs and women. 